We now turn to America's Now commentator, Laura Carlson, who shares what she learned from some of the survivors, including more startling statistics of gender-based violence across Latin America. As the drug war in Mexico and Central America captures headlines all over the world, there's a silent side to it that few people talk about. Violence against women has become a crisis in the region. It's not just that women make up a growing proportion of the rising death toll. They suffer specific forms of violence because they are women, and often because they're on the front lines in defending their families and their communities. A recent delegation led by Nobel Peace Prize winners Jody Williams and Rigoberta Menchu found that femicides, disappearances, rapes, attacks on women human rights defenders, and violations of rights are rampant in the three countries visited, Mexico, Honduras, and Guatemala. I had the honor of being part of the delegation, and what we found after hearing hundreds of testimonies from women survivors and human rights defenders is that women are being attacked by both organized crime and by the armies and police charged with protecting them. In Honduras, the coup of June 2009 and the post-coup regime led by Pepe Lobo has led to a major increase in femicides, often with the complicity or involvement of government officials and state security forces. 685 women were assassinated in Guatemala in 2010, compared to only 213 in 2000. In Mexico, femicides have gone up 40% since 2006, the year the war on drugs was launched. An untold number of women, factory workers, migrants, activists, have been forcibly disappeared without so much as the decency of a burial and the certainty of mourning. Ciudad Juarez on the U.S. border saw a 1,000% increase in femicides after the army was sent in to fight organized crime. Violence against women flourishes in societies given over to bloodshed and lawlessness. Women human rights defenders are targeted by repressive governments. Indigenous women, organized in defense of their lands and communities, suffer attacks from companies that want access to their precious metals or other natural resources. Women who dare to speak up on abuses by military and police forces or to call for justice in crimes against loved ones are silenced. Where drug cartels battle for turf, women's bodies become the medium for macabre messages of brute force. Sexual violence is a routine part of the assassination of women because it signals domination. Many women have responded by putting their lives on the line to demand justice. With 95% of crimes going unpunished in these countries, they refuse to give up. These women have gone from being the bereaved to the brave. Hundreds of mothers whose children have been disappeared or assassinated marched in Mexico City last Mother's Day. Waving signs with the photos of their daughters, the mothers chanted, they were taken alive. We want them back alive. One woman told the crowd, we'll keep struggling, even if it costs us our lives, to see the day when the assassins are brought to trial. We want justice. Only the most callous or cynical of societies could ignore her plea.